Now available in paperback and coming to Kindle Unlimited, John Haynes, Dark Succubus, the man who rules the world, is tempted by a sultry succubus in this all-new John Haynes series adventure. Get John Haynes, Dark Succubus in paperback or pre-order on Kindle Unlimited today. One of my viewers, Soul Shader Entertainment Official, wanted to know what my process was for writing a story. And I'm going to go in depth into that process in this video. Now, when it comes down to my process, it comes from a foundation in two styles of writing. My style partially comes from comic books, which is a highly visual style, and it also comes from screenwriting, which is a visual style, where the writer has to tell a story using the fewest economy of words. And I fuse the techniques I learned from comic books and screenwriting to create a prose style where I use short paragraphs for prose and quick sequences of dialogue to create a visual style that allows the reader to imagine pictures in their head like either a comic book in their imagination or a movie sequence in their imagination. So that is the foundation of my writing style and my process for writing stories starts with that writing style which is a very visual style and one that allows the reader to immerse themselves into the world of the characters and even be a bit of an observer of the action because what I do is as I use those styles that fuse comics and screenwriting together, I put that together with a revolving first-person perspective. And I use the revolving first-person perspective because I believe it allows the reader to get an objective view of the action better than that of a third-person omniscient narrator. Because when it comes down to revolving first-person, as I use it, it allows you to step into the world and see the action going on as an objective observer, draw your own observations regarding that action, and come to the conclusions, your own conclusions, about those characters' actions in the story. And I believe that this immersive experience allows the reader to get more involved with the characters, identify more with the characters, and identify more with the experiences going on in the story. And when I, with that foundation I have with from that platform, I start my process of writing a story. And usually when I start my process for writing a story, I come up with a concept. For example, for the novel um, Spinsterella, I wanted to talk about African Americans in the goth subculture. I wanted to create a character that I believe would represent a positive image of a black person in the goth subculture with the Matilda Crowley character. And in order for me to start writing that story, the first thing I have to do is do my research. So research is paramount in writing a story. You want to make sure that you get as many details as possible to fit your story. And you want to be able to make sure that when you're writing your story that all of those details fit with what people know. Because when you're writing a story, you have to know what you're writing. Because if you know what you're writing, then your story is going to come more to life to the reader. The reader is going to identify with the characters in the story. And they're going to care enough to continue reading the story. And in order to get myself into a position after doing my research about the facts of a subject like the got black goth subculture, I then, after I do my research, I then ask three questions as I'm creating the character. And those three questions I ask myself, and sometimes I write down um, in an outline those three questions, are who is the main character, what do they want, and why should we care? And if you can answer those three questions, you are laying the foundation for 
writing a solid story because in order for you to start writing a story you have to be able to identify who your main character is and what why they should be the focus of the story so for example in Spinsterella Matilda Crowley is the main character of the story and in Spinsterella what she wants to do is find out what is going on with the quiet man and why should we care because when it comes down to um, your goth people um, people in the goth subculture they're very introverted and they want to get to know people but they're afraid to get to know people because they have this fear that people will misunderstand them and she Matilda doesn't understand the quiet man and why he's staying to himself so it's about two introverts finding getting to know each other and then finding love with each other so that was the foundation of the book Spinsterella and those are the three questions I had to answer when I was laying out before I was even put the fingers to the keyboard because before you put your fingers to the keyboard for a story you have to one do your research and then two answer those three questions and then once you've answered those three questions then you can get into the conflict and the conflict for Spinsterella are two things they are the issues with the quiet man staying to himself and Matilda's own introversion and shyness that keep her from having that relationship with the quiet man so those are the two conflicts that are the major conflicts of that story and for another story um, we have Esteem the Sands of Time, I also answer those questions as well. So for this story, the main character is a teenage princess Esteem, and what she wants to do is she wants to show the people in the temple and her father the pharaoh that she can be a woman, and we care because we want to see this young princess come into womanhood, and the obstacles that your Esteem faces is her lack of maturity and she also faces the conflict of not understanding how things work in the adult world. So the, that was the conflict, that's the main conflict, and the sub-conflict is she has to try to help the teenage John Haynes try to get back to his time and because he's been time displaced and she has to come to a um, level of maturity in order to do that because she starts to have feelings for John at 14 years old and she has to deal with her feelings and that again relates to her being a woman so all of these conflicts they all come together to create the obstacles that Esteem has to face in this story and it's the conflict that is one thing that you really have to focus on because if you have a strong conflict like I have in Esteem the Sands of Time or Spinsterella, you will have a solid foundation for a story because one of the things that is important about a story is that you have to understand that after you've established again your research on the facts you want to write about, your main character, what they want to do, why we should care, the obstacles they run into, you have to understand conflict. Now conflict is important because conflict is what's going to drive your story. And when it comes down to stories, you need conflicts to continuously go on either internally with the characters or externally with the action. And when you have those two types of conflict going on, they are going to push the story forward and that's what's going to give a reader incentive to keep reading until the end of the story because people who relate to the characters their experiences and the journey they're going on they are going to be compelled by the story you tell about this character and they're going to be compelled because they see 
part partially themselves in the character and they are identify with their experiences one two they're going to want to connect with the action and that's going to make them care to keep reading and three the action going on if it's if it's really good that's what's going to keep them involved in the story so you really want to get your readers involved in the story from the first four or five pages because if you can hook them in four to five pages then you're going to be able to drive that story all the way to the end now because I use a technique from comic books and screenwriting I understand that I have to get the reader into the story very quickly so because I use techniques from screenwriting and comic books I understand that the first three to five pages are extremely important in writing a story because it's in that first three to five pages that we establish that main character what they want why we should care the conflict that they face and what they have to overcome and all of those elements have to come together very quickly for example with another book I did Spellbound I established the main character of Matilda Crowley again in the year of 1989 and the thing that your Matilda Crowley wants in this story is she wants to find her voice and as an introvert she's used to being in the background and she wants to speak out and let people know what she wants to do with her life and how she wants to live her life and the readers care because a lot of kids are shy they want to be able to say things and they're not able to say things and I knew a lot of people in the goth subculture they were very shy so they wanted to go out here and be able to be able to speak and express themselves freely and again the conflict is internal as related to Matilda's introversion and it's external as related to bullies in her life and also related to even her family which want her to be a certain way because her father wants her to be this little lady and she wants to be her own lady so these are the conflicts that lay the foundation for the story and it compels people is that first three to five pages where we get to know Matilda and we get to know her struggle so in the first three to five pages of a story you really want to lay down everything very quickly you want to get that story laid foundation laid with the as related to the main character what they again what they want to do that internal conflict and you want to start driving that conflict off to that first plot point as soon as possible because if you can get to that first plot point and do that within the first 50 or so pages of a novel you are going to get the reader into the story uh, very quickly and again this is a technique I learned from screenwriting where they talk about from the first 25 pages of a screenplay you have to really get people into the story and the first plot point by the 25th page now when it comes down to your stories again they follow a three-act paradigm and that's what I that's another part of the model I use in my process for writing a story is I follow the three-act paradigm that I learned in Sid Field's screenplay because when I was when I was developing my writing style I learned part of it from screenwriting in Sid Field's screenplay and he talked about um, setting up your story in three acts so usually in the first act of my story I again set up everything and then when I get to plot point one where I set up the part where the, where the where we get the major twist because plot point one is a plot twist and that plot twist moves us into the second act now act two is where I do a little modification of Sid Fields technique and I usually go from a first act which introduces everything and lays out the story to plot point one to a quick second act where I continue to develop the story and the characters and I usually make that very short and then we get to plot point two and another twist in the story and then we get into the rising action to the climax and then we get to the conclusion and as we go through the process of that 
three-act paradigm, which is the story model, we get to see the character, the her hero or the heroine, overcoming the conflicts, working towards what they want, and in a way that makes the reader care. So that's all part of the process, and it's something that I've learned to do over the years when it comes down to storytelling, and if it wasn't for my sister giving me this book, I wouldn't have been able to really develop my foundation for my storytelling. So this is an essential book that you, that you can use to learn more about storytelling and more about the story story paradigm, which is usually the, the classic is three acts, but you can go four or five. And with Spellbound, I started to get I started to play with it a bit, and I also played with it with Wrath of the Cyber Goddess, where I also in that book I um that's where I started really modifying that whole second act because second acts can go really long for the traditional model, but I found a way to shorten the second act so that the reader can come in and start reading faster and get to that third act with the climax and the conclusion. So I use, I've, what I did was I shortened it a bit so that the reader wouldn't feel like the book is just going on forever and they could just get right into the action. Now another book that I have read to learn more about writing is Robert McKee's story. Now this is another screenwriting book, but it's another book that will teach you a lot about the foundations of writing. And my national best-selling author friend, she recommended this book to me, and it's been an invaluable tool to helping me develop and hone my writing skills. And it's another book that you could definitely go out here and use towards developing your writing skills. Now, when it comes down to writing stories, I know that it's a, it's a very tough process, and... Soul Shader is only 20 years old, and I remember being um, 20 years old and writing stories back then. I was, that's when I did the first couple of John Haynes's, and they were absolutely terrible. And it's, it's a major challenge to get a story from beginning to end when you're that young. But it is something that you can work towards, and the way you work towards it is you have to spend some time writing every day because I remember when I went back to writing at 16 years old um, I started writing every day and that helps you develop your skills and it also helps you develop a work ethic because when you're sitting there in front of the keyboard these days I used to write by hand though with pens but um, in, in 1990 when I started writing again but when you write every day that helps you build that discipline to get to the end of that story because when it comes down to writing stories sometimes you're gonna get blocked sometimes you're gonna get frustrated because when it comes down to writing we see oftentimes for myself I can say this um, usually I, I have all these ideas in my head and they're flowing so fast that it's hard for me to process them all and sometimes I have to stop because I, I just try, I can't do it all in one sitting or in one series of sittings, and sometimes I just have to stop, and other times I have to stop sometimes because I, sometimes I get stuck on a point, and sometimes getting stuck on a point is a good thing because then you can reflect on what you've written, but what you have to do is you have to try to navigate through it because sometimes when you do get, when you do stop, you get this point where you don't continue writing, but when I, usually when I get like that, I'll find something else to write, like a blog, or I'll try to find something like a uh, article to write, or I'll even just do more outlines or something like that for another story. And the whole thing is, you just don't leave the story. Sometimes you got to let a story rest for a minute, but then you always come back to it, and you have to keep working at it because that's how you get to the end. I mean. A book like a Spinsterella, this book took me about six months to do the first draft, and then it took me another year to finish the story. And this story, East Steam the Sands of Time, this one took me about maybe 90 days to do the first draft, and then it took me another three to four months to 
do the revisions, but I work faster than a lot of, the, of writers out here because I usually have projects going on all throughout the year. So usually I'll have a book, but usually I'll be working on three, four books at the time because when it comes down to publishing and writing, usually you don't make a lot of money on books, so you always have to have projects going on in order to find a way to get to the ones that sell. So usually when I'm doing a project like this one, Spellbound, this one, this one was one of the odd ones. I took this one took me 90 days to write, but then I had to spend another three to six months doing the editing on it. But I had a really solid background from everything that I had written in Spinsterella as related to the research on the goth subculture and black people in the goth subculture. And I also knew a lot about the time period I was writing about, 1989. So I had an extensive background in what I was writing. I knew what I was writing. So it, it didn't take as long as a the original Spinsterella. But when it comes down to it, I had to just keep staying at it because sometimes some days I would get stuck. But then I would take a minute to do something else, and then the ideas would flow again. And that's that's all part of the process of writing, is that you're not going to write an entire novel in one day. It's going to take, you know, a couple of hours a day. Usually I spend about maybe two, three hours a day in front of a keyboard working on a story, usually in the evenings or the weekends or the late nights I'll work on on parts of the story and I'll keep working until I get to the finish line I may stop here or there to rest but I will eventually get to the finish line and I usually get to the finish line because I usually or I am committed to the story that I'm writing and that's a thing that a lot of young writers have to understand is that you have to commit to that story and see it to the end you may not feel confident in the beginning about what you're writing because I remember when I was writing the first John Haynes story the I didn't feel that confident about it um, back in 1990 but I still powered through and I got to the end and getting to the end that is how you're gonna really start to build your confidence because yeah the first story you're gonna do it's gonna be I'm gonna say this absolutely terrible but it's the learning, it's what you're going to learn from that story. You're going to learn as you deal with people uh, who read your story about the mistakes you make, and those mistakes are going to help you become a better writer. So don't think about writing a great story out of the gate. Everybody's first story is absolutely horrible. And the first John Hay story I wrote involved a gang, involved a nuclear device inside of a slot machine and a cosmetics company. It was absolutely ridiculous, but in order for me to make the John Haynes character great in books like The Temptation of John Haynes, I had to write absolutely terrible stories in the beginning. In the first three or four attempts at trying to write this character, they were absolutely horrible, and they are now in a landfill in Fresh Kills. Now, I have the best attempt at that I did in 95 called The Changing Soul. I still have that on my computer. And even that story is so bad that I would not share it with anyone. But it, it was all part of the learning process and it was all a part of my development of my craft. But in order for me to get to the point where I could write a character like John Haynes and make him really solid for a book like Temptation of John Haynes, I had to go through a process of writing bad stories before I started writing good stories. So that's also part of the process is that your first couple of stories, they're not going to be that great. But there are things you can learn about those stories like prose style, dialogue, and character development that will enable you to grow in your craft and enable you to develop your skills. Now, another th part of my process of writing a story is not just um, doing research and going out here and understanding the questions as related to the stories I'm writing. It is also about creating characters. And one of the things I do for Revolving First Person Perspective is I try to create characters based on their voice. Because when it comes down to Revolving First Person Perspective, it is the characters telling their own stories and their voice is paramount 
in telling a story. So, for example, with E. Steam, The Sands of Time, the E. Steam character was originally inspired by actress Sally Richardson Whitfield, a actress I watched on Disney's Gargoyles. So, um, I was watching her, I liked the sound of her voice, I liked, and I also, as I saw films that she did, like A Low Down Dirty Shame back in the day, I liked her appearance, and that's what gave me the idea for the e Steam character. So, whenever I'm writing a character in, in the e Steam narrative, I often imagine her sounding like Sally Richardson. And, for example, with the Spinsterella character, Matilda Crowley, I got inspired by something Persia White, actress Persia White said about being so dark for being light-skinned, and that's where I got part of the idea for the Matilda Crowley character. Now, the other part came from actress Tia Maori and a picture of her with her father, who was a white man, and that gave me the idea for Matilda's family. So, whenever I do the Matilda voice, it's sort of like a kind of part California surfer chick, part Harlem girl. And some people say it sounds like Paula Patton, but that's where I got the idea for that voice. And the whole idea of the voice in the narrative is it allows us to get to know this character, get to know their speech pattern. And one of the things I do is I study actor speech patterns to get the voices so that you, when you read the story, you, when you imagine it, it's in a way like a movie and you can see these characters come to life, you can imagine what these characters sound like, you can imagine the places they're in, and everything comes to life in a way that allows you to immerse yourself in the action. Because again, I believe if you immerse yourself in the action, then you can go out here and really get the reader compelled to read your story from beginning to end. But you say that you have a hard time um, completing a story, but the whole thing, again, is you have to stick with what you're writing, and you have to see it to the end. I mean, you may not see the end in an outline, because when it comes down to writing, sometimes I would write outlines in the beginning, like I did for Spinsterella, but still, I would go out here and sometimes change things, and sometimes the characters themselves would change things. And that's another thing a lot of writers have to understand is that when it comes down to stories, you will go out here and you'll have an idea for where you want to go in a story. However, sometimes the characters will go in a different direction. And I've had that happen to me on numerous occasions where the characters just went in a different direction. And I went with it because it led me to a better story. So whenever you're creating characters, it's their story, and that's something else you have to understand about trying to get to the end, is you can't fight the characters and where they want to go. And that's where many Marvel comics are right now. They're, these writers are trying to force their narrative into identity politics and make the story go their way, when the story has to go where the characters are taking it. So if you have characters going in one direction, you have to let those characters go in that direction and that's how you get to the end now the getting to the end that that's the toughest part because that second act it it can it can make or break a story the first act will do a great job of setup and the thing that will really push the story forward is that second act and a lot of young writers they get caught up in exposition and trying to develop the characters that they don't move the story forward and that's a mistake i've seen a lot of writers make on their stories is trying to just trying to let everybody know everything about these characters instead of letting the characters show us and that's another thing that's important about writing you have to understand is that and when it comes down to writing storytelling is an active thing and it's active because this is this is going on right now it may be another era like i did for a story called isis imitation of life it may be 1937 but the action is going on now. So everything is going on now in the, in the reader's imagination, and you have to move things so that the reader is actively engaged. And when it comes down to writing stories, it's a very active thing. And that's, again, why I use the comic book and screenwriting style, because they're very active, they're very high energy, and they are very dynamic. 
and you want to do that to get to the st complete story from the beginning to the end. Now, the other thing you have to do if you really want to get to the end of a story, in addition to writing, is you have to do a lot of reading. And I've read about three, 4,000 comic books. I've read multiple screenplays. I've read many novels. And that helped me to understand what Robert McKee was talking about in story and what Sid Field was talking about in screenplay. So I understood what they were talking about as I was reading lots of books. And reading is going to help you in two ways to become a better writer. One, you're going to get an understanding of the writing styles of different writers. And two, you're going to understand how stories work and over time. Because as you're reading the stories, you're going to start seeing it from the perspective of the writer and not just for entertainment purposes. What you're going to see is the foundations that they put in the first chapter, main character, what they want to do, why should we care, and then we're going to go into the conflict, then we're going to go into the story points, we're going to meet the supporting cast, then we're going to get to plot point one, then we're going, which twists the action and spins it around, then we're going to get to the second act, which moves from plot point one to moving the story further forward to plot point two, which will spin the action around once again. Then we're going to go into the third act, which leads into the climax, and eventually we get to the conclusion of the story, which where the hero or the heroine will go out and either accomplish what they wanted to accomplish, or they won't accomplish what they didn't, what they wanted to accomplish. And we will have a reason and understanding why all of these things happen. So that's what a, that's what reading will help you understand is the logical sequence of a story, the logical sequence of the action in a story, and it will show you an understanding of why this character wanted to accomplish this and whether or not the actions they took led to them accomplishing what they accomplished or failing to accomplish what they had wanted to accomplish. Now another thing that I use for learning how to get a story to the end, also for storytelling, is going out here and I watch a lot of movies. And again, that comes from this whole screenwriting perspective because once you see the action on screen, then you can get an understanding of how a story works. And there were a lot of classic movies I would watch, like Sunset Boulevard, The Apartment, and many others, like Last American Virgin, which also helped me to understand a lot more ways on how to complete a story. So I learned a lot from not only reading books, but I also learned from watching movies as well, and from comic books. So... All of those are part of the process of learning how to complete a story. But the thing that young writers have to understand is they have to understand that you're going to have to really commit to it. And that means a lot of sacrifice. That means a lot of evenings, a lot of weekends. You're going to miss a lot of stuff because you're going to want to stay at that keyboard. And if these characters mean a lot to you and you, you're going to want to commit to that story and see it through to the end. And... When you first start out, it's going to be a slow process because I remember when I wrote Temptation of John Haynes in 2005, it took me about a year and a half to do this book, and it was 100,000, 120,000 words, and it took me a long time because it was it was like one of the first books where I was really getting serious. So it took it took about a year for that book, and but as my skills got better, again. Um, with Spinsterella, it was like, it took me a year to do this one too, but it took me about 90 days to do the first draft, and for Easting the Sands of Time, it took me 90 days to do the first draft, and Spellbound, it took me 90 days to do the first draft, but when it comes down to it, you will start to see your skills get better, you'll get a lot faster in terms of being able to complete a story, and the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. So the thing that you have to do in order to fully complete a story is you're going to have to keep practicing 
and you're going to have to keep taking critical looks at the things you want to write about and you're going to have to try to see if those things are working because the only way to keep become a better writer is to keep reading and to keep writing and you have to write every day if you hope to stay committed to it so when it comes down to writing a book it is not something that you're going to do overnight it's something that's going to take a series of days weeks and months and the writing of the first draft is the toughest part and even tougher than that are those first four or five pages because that first four or five pages for me sometimes that might take a week a week and a half these days or sometimes it might even take a month but once I start rolling then the book will start moving and then once the characters start telling their stories eventually the story will start writing itself but the whole thing is you have to start um, and just start writing stories and eventually start and continue to read because that's again how you're going to learn how to become a better writer. I'm hoping that this video helps you learn a bit more about the process of writing and I'm hoping that you go out here and you keep writing because the only way you're going to get better as a writer is if you go out here and you just stay at that keyboard and you stay focused on your story you stay focused on your characters and you go out here and you continue to do research because sometimes you might be getting stuck because you're not getting the details together or you're not executing things but it takes time to hone those skills and the only way you're gonna hone them is to keep per keep working at it and this is not a short process this is a long process and it's something that you're go it's going to take years for you to master so it's something that is, is that you you definitely can do but you just have to have the discipline resolve and commitment to stay with it because if you stay with it you will find yourself becoming a great writer and a master of the craft of writing now if you want to learn more about writing I urge you guys all to pick up Sid Fields screenplay and Robert McKee's story because they will help you a long way and young brother if you want to see how my process of writing goes I urge I recommend that you pick up the temptation of John Haynes because um, it's one of my strongest stories, Spellbound, another strong story that will really show you conflict and show you a main character going through those internal and external conflicts. Um, Einstein, The Sands of Time, and Spensterella. All these books will show you my writing process and my style of writing and many of the techniques I use. And if you guys want to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box. And if you want to try some of my SJS Direct publications, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, Esteem Goddess of. Elle's aspiring angel takes on a demonic dominatrix in this action-packed all-new Esteem series adventure. Get Esteem Goddess of in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today.